Hi, this is Rich Ustowski, and I'm here today, April the 6th, with Aaron Brunsman as part of the Center for Middletown Studies High School Consolidation Oral History Project. And Aaron was nice enough to sit down with us and talk, and he's going to give us some of his thoughts and opinions on the recent high school consolidation here in Muncie. And just as some background, Aaron is the husband of Melanie Stater, whom we've already interviewed. So now we're going to start with Aaron, if you wouldn't mind telling us um, where you live, your age, and what you do. Um, address is 3900 South Larry Lane here in mm -hmm. Muncie mm -hmm. on the south side. i um, 44 years old, and I am a service technician. I work on big uh, fire alarms and card access systems, camera systems, okay. um, usually in the Indy metro area. So I commute every day to Indianapolis, back and forth, so, to okay. Muncie, all right. Okay. And to, to start us off here, well, would you mind giving us your thoughts and opinions on the consolidation? Thoughts, you mean just thoughts in general? Thoughts in general. Um, First thing that comes to mind. All right, well, I, I need to preface everything. Um, I'm not from Muncie. Okay. I've lived in Muncie for the last 21 years. Mm-hmm. Um, I met my wife in Muncie, who's a Muncie native, um, a Muncie Southside native, and um, we're raising a family here. We have one daughter. Mm -hmm. um, my thoughts are, at first, was like, oh man, can't just wait another year, because uh, simple fact is my daughter, um, this is her senior year, so she got to experience her cons the whole consolidation during her senior year of high school. Um, which has its drawbacks because if you think about it, um, this kid has been her whole life with her mom, a teacher in the school, um, where she attended, um, and approaching her senior year, she comes under the realization that, yeah, well, she's not going to get to do all those things that she anticipated. For a simple fact is because, you know, schools were consolidated. That she had to move schools. Her school was going away. So... Um, when we talk about fairness, um, I think that's the first thing that should ever be brought up is that there is a lot, there wasn't a lot of empathy for those kids that lost something that they, uh, that they'd had no control over. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's, that's the, that's the biggest, um, that's the biggest downfall of the whole, whole of the whole deal. Um, Besides, there's other points, of course, but sure. um, but being as a positive nature and a pro Muncie person, um, um, me and my family, we're we're pro Muncie people. We spend most of our money here in Muncie. We do a lot of things here in Muncie. The majority of my friends are Muncie people. Mm -hmm. um, we're involved locally um, in all kinds of different things, uh, from you know not for profits to sports teams to whatever. Um, and I understand the rationale behind why consolidation was necessary. I just believe that Muncie Community Schools went about the way they approached it was all wrong. Um, my thoughts are on the whole issue is they should have, from the get-go, um, instead of paying lip service and hearing voices and town hall meetings and whatnot, um, if they were as progressive as they say they are, then um, I think what the way, in hindsight, I think the way they should have done it, um, well, even I was even speaking out to it then, is they should have just broadcast that they're going to, you know, we have no choice. Mm -hmm. The schools mm -hmm. are going to have to consolidate. You know, populate, our tax base is dwindling. You know, manufacturing is leaving. We have no choice. We have to consult. We, have, we need one high school in this, a town this size. It's happening all over the country, not just here in the Rust Belt, but all over the country. Um, so what I think that Muncie Community School's biggest fault was they thought, people thought they were getting a voice, that their voice was being heard. Mm -hmm. But um, those with any, uh, with any common sense at all say there's no way that Muncie was going to operate with two high schools. There's no way that it was fiscally, fiscally irresponsible and almost impossible. So are, are you saying... So uh, what, well, what I'm getting at is that the way that it should have, what should have happened is Muncie... Muncie Community Schools as a whole should have went to the populace and said, hey, we have no choice. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the best high school we can here in Muncie, Indiana. All right. And it, you know, we're going to have to use the biggest building we have. Mm -hmm. All right. 
you know, Central is the biggest building. It can house all the kids. We can't fit all these kids in that Southside building, so you might as well, you know, guess what? You can't do it. Um, so it sounds like your biggest beef, so so to speak, is that um, the school corporation gave folks a false sense of hope. Oh, yeah, total lip, there, total lip service. That there could have been two high schools. Uh, yeah, if you come up with this brilliant idea that we haven't thought of or, you know, someone can't, you know, let's do a ninth grade preparatory academy or, you know, let's merge the, you know, let's merge the middle schools and close this other building. You know, all it was was lip service and all it did is, is foster people's foster people's ideas that something, you know, that it was possible. That, you know, not even possible, but probable. Mm-hmm. And there there was no way, there was no way that logistically, I mean, you're, you're just, even if it was for one or two years, but the way education is funded here in Indiana, there's no way that it could sustain, sustain itself. It, I mean, if you looked, <laughs> logistically, it was impossible. So I think that their biggest fault was instead of coming out and saying, hey, you know, we need to do this. Guess what? You guys are the ones that you know we we're faced with tax caps you know you know it's the people you put in office you know that you're that you're you know the people that you put in office that you know really aren't big fans of public education and what do you think is going to happen i mean i can't i i couldn't wrap my head around the whole thing and i i really wanted much community schools to come out and say hey guess what we're gonna make the best high school we can in east central indiana and guess what it's going to be one high school, Muncie High School, and, and that's another place where they where they faltered terribly. Um, you know, not only, you know, in not being a native to Muncie, I wasn't, I wasn't privy to all that prior. You know, not not growing up here. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I moved here when I got out of the service, um, and my wife, being a native Southsider, would tell me things, and I'm like, no, nah, there's no way, whatever, you know, and then you know. Like what? Like, you know, we would be out and, and she's, you know, well, yeah, well, I see that Central played last night and Central has the, you know, the front page of the Star Press. You know, Southside played too, but, you know, you see that, um, you know, not necessarily getting the same, the same respect from the media, the same respect from the public, just because it was Southside. The lesser of the two, always. And, you know, even, you know, since I lived over there, I've kind of gained a chip myself because... I started seeing, you know, some of those things were ringing true. Um, I even had, you know, I've had, you know, friends of mine that, you know, that have never, they had no reason to go south in South Muncie. And, you know, there's, there's no reason for them to, unless they were coming to a Southside event until our daughter got into high school and they were coming to witness something that she was in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the same, I, I, I had one of my best friends say, dude, I can't believe people keep their yards up on this side of town. <laughs> you, you know, keep the yards like moan, you know, like, you know, oh yeah, yeah, you know, we do mow our grass on this side of town. And that was from one of my best friends. And it just, it just, it threw me. It just totally threw me for a loop. And, um, I, if it, and I, I do see that, I, I do see that chip on, on folks' shoulders, but then, you know, I fault Southsiders for being so insular at times. Um, even when you get into community projects where, um, where they're talking about one, a, you know, a month's one, the, the, the singular Muncie entity trying to do something together. Um, Southsiders, you know, um, and I, and I, and I do, I can't fault them. It's like, you know, why would I, why would, you know, I live in on South Muncie. Why would I want something, you know, downtown? Why would I want something, you know, why would I want the Cardinal Greenway? How does it benefit me mm-hmm. as a Southsider? You know, um, why uh, why would i why would i care if ball state's doing this you know i'm you know i'm, I'm a south sider you know so and, they ask themselves those questions but you're saying no i mean they, they, would, they, they would they would they would say it out loud so, i mean i would go i would go to community meetings um they have this uh there is this it's been going over several years where um rallying support um there's a there was a, a study and then there's an action plan for muncie for the city of muncie as a whole um, and I'd go to these meetings with fellow Southsiders and, you know, the first thing, you know, some ladies, you know, some, you know, 65 year old ladies lived, you know, South Muncie her whole life. You know, why would I care about down? Why would I care about Cannon Commons in Muncie? You know, why would, why do we need to park downtown Muncie? Why do I care if the sidewalks in downtown Muncie, you know, are ADA compliant? Things like that. And you disagree with Oh, I disagree that. totally. I, do, I disagree totally. Cause I, you know, cause 
once again, you know, it's not, you know, I, I was under the realization that consolidation did need to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's a given. But first of all, Muncie Community Schools went about it wrong. And um, second of all, those po- those insular people that are so negative about the whole thing is they have nobody to blame but themselves. And they don't see that. <laughs> because of those, you know, they're not, you know, you, you talk about it, you know, I don't care how you beat around the bush about it, but the same, some of the same folks that you would see get up and speak at these town hall meetings or whatnot, they are folks that, you know, they voted the people in office that, you know, could care less about public education, you know, and how it's funded and where the, you know, where the money comes from. So we're going to get to identity a little bit later, but do you think identity plays a role in the reason why people on the South side um, have that sentiment that you were just talking about? Do they not identify with other parts of town or as Muncie as a whole? No, they don't. They, they don't. And now, now quite a few of them. Now, I mean, now I would say, now, I, I don't know how to break it down demographically, you know, but I would say the folks that, I would say folks, especially on that side of town, identify as Southsiders opposed to identifying as Munsonians mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, by far, by far, by far. And those, and, and then, and I, I can say that because I've been to those meetings with those folks. And when you, when you bring out, um, and you know, I, I, and I can't say it's just because, you know, I have a, you know, me and a few of my friends that do live on that town or on that side of town, you know, we might have, you know, progressive ideals, but that's, it's even people, it's, it's, it's not a demographic place. That's what's weird to me. You know what I mean? It depends how deeply rooted. It's not based on, it's not based on, you can't base it demographically. It's something that's inherent to them individually. Because I don't care if, you know, I don't care where you fall politically and on the spectrum. I don't care where you fall racially on the spectrum. I don't care where you fall um, financially on the spectrum. If you, if it's inherent to you that you're a Southsider above all, mm-hmm. Those are the people where the loudest voices were heard, and mm-hmm. they couldn't accept the fact, no matter what, even if it was going to be bad. And I, the problem is, the problem is, and, like, and we'll go back to that, because Muncie Community Schools gave them this false sense that their voices would have been, would have been heard. But, mm-hmm. you know, and truthfully, it didn't matter. It was, it was never something that, that could possibly work out. Well, and to go off on that, for their vo- voices, for, for to have shown that their voices were heard, there would have had to have been two separate high schools or South Side exactly. to be that building that consolidated. Exactly, the and and that, that and that and like in, in you and I both know that logistically that was in, that was impossible. You could not fit all those kids in South Side, you know, and we could not as as the, the town our size could not sustain two high schools. So I that's that's what I go back to. I don't know why they would even entertain the conversation. Mm-hmm. Makes sense to you? I, I, I guess I, I don't know. I'm trying no, very, to. Very yeah, much, yeah. No, very much yeah. so. Very much so. It, um, I hesitate to even ask you this question, but do you feel like your voice was heard in the decision making process? Your voice personally? Um, yes, and you know, I, 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 you know, I got booed at a couple um, town hall meetings. I spoke at almost every one of them. Uh-huh. Um, my problem was, and I was behind. Um, I was behind. Uh, a thing on social media where, and people didn't, until I, I came out publicly, folks didn't know it was me just because of my wife's, um, my wife's position within Muncie Community Schools. Um, but I was all for one Muncie High School. So I, I you know, I, I knew the fight was over. We're, there was no way that we were not going to consolidate. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, my thoughts are, you know, well then let's do one high school. It was to do one high school. This is Muncie. This is Muncie Community School's chance to not only do one high school. Let's do one high school with one a new name. Let's. It's an opportunity for Muncie Community Schools to not only that rebrand themselves because there's not a lot of faith in you know Muncie Community Schools as a community. Um, if you look at Muncie Community Schools, if you look at um, if you just look at the population of teachers to the amount of if you take all of Muncie Community Schools as a whole and look at teacher wise look how many of those folks that work for Muncie Community Schools that are educators that actually get their kids educated by Muncie Community Schools you'd be surprised at, at, at the high number or the low number the, lo, the, the low number the low number it would surprise you 
Um, and my thoughts are, you know, if I, you know, if, if I'm going to be part of a community, I want my kid to attend that, you know, that public school in that community, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, not only that, to get that experience that you can't, you know, it's, that's one special thing about Indiana and it's something that you cannot get in, you know, you can only get in, you know, middle America right here. You can only, you can only get that experience of a school such as that or that type of feeling and the way, the way it is here in Indiana. I, I don't think you can anywhere else across the country. Um, so where does that lack of faith stem from? The, um, well, um, you know, I think it's a lot, a lot of it's driven by media. Um, you know, failing schools, you see that flashed out in front of you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're, they're sure to, you know, um, they're sure to accentuate the negative, but when it comes to the positive, you don't see a lot, you know, it could be, um, you know, you don't see it, you don't see, you know, something touted, you know, test scores touted because, you know, you had this one group of kids do amazingly well. Um, but they'll show, you know, they'll be the first one to show out, you know, well, you know, they, they had this disciplinary problem, you know, oh, a gun was found in a locker or, you know, some, you know, that thing that will be plastered over the newspaper, you know, that will be the banner ad for three days. Um, but when it comes to something positive, it's, you don't see, you don't see that play out unless it's, you know, a sporting event. And, and, you know, it's, it's sad. I mean, there's not, there's not a lot of faith in public education. Um, and I think that's from, um, uh, you know, it's people, um, it's people not realizing the good that public education does. I, 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 I don't I can't understand it but you know I, without going on on some crazy tangent about the proletariat then um, <laughs> um, you know it's it's what is what we need is it's what needs to be you know public education is is the is the fundamentals for it should, it should be it should be the number one priority in any community that public school system in any community okay. Do you feel like you speak for or with a certain neighborhood or side of town? Um, well, I mean, that's hard. Um, where I can empathize with Southsiders, I don't think I truly speak as a Southsider because I'm not okay. from there. Okay. But I can empathize because, like I said, I, I've seen things, you know, that I wasn't privy to not being from here. But of living, living here over 20 years, I, I've seen things. But um, I think I'm a community person. Um and yeah i think i i n- neither side i think i'm more of a like a monsonian a community person i you know because i do love this little town um that being said it doesn't um you know it doesn't mean that i agree with everything that happens here either do you think that um monsonian rather than north side south side identity that, that you say you have, do you think that played a role in how you approach the consolidation? Yeah, well, you know, and then, like I said, I, you know, this was Muncie Community School's chance. You know, we even have, we, we have our mayor preaches, you know, all of his taglines on his, even on his, you know, if he's tweeting me. Um, the mayor's tweeting me, you know, his tagline is one Muncie. You know, and that's fine and dandy for that lip service, one Muncie. Mm-hmm. But truly, have, have we seen it? I mean, even... You know, you have this Ball State, Insular Island of Ball State here. And, you know, um, with the exception of this fine office here and, you know, the fine office that happens, you know, happens here, that could give, you know, less than two, you know, whatever's about Muncie as a whole. Um, there is, it's, it's fractionalized to the point where you have Muncie in different sections. And I think if... Muncie Community Schools went about the consolidation the right way and brought all those things in mm-hmm. to play a part, then there, we wouldn't be complaining about transition. We'd be we, we'd all be up in arms, you know, excited about you know the, what new possibilities this is. This great new school. Instead, you have people worrying about a mascot, and 
if the the importance was truly that mascot, then not why not just get rid of both of them and make one new one? It was their opportunity here. Right here at this point in time, they had that opportunity to rebrand the whole school system based on, you know, based on the fact that, you know, we, we're going to have to consolidate schools. And they failed miserably. Is that what your Facebook page was dedicated yeah. to, was rebranding? Yeah, renaming, rebranding, rebirth. <laughs> and Did you have any suggestions for... Oh, yeah, I, I had it all planned out. Uh, let's, let's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's so, um, so my thoughts were, um, and I even I spoke of this at town halls, and like I said, I'll, I'll preface everything again by saying I kept it anonymous probably for the first six months because I didn't want people because my wife te- was a teacher at Muncie South, mm-hmm. um, and it all came about um, a few of our friends were downtown Muncie because you know people actually do enjoy downtown Muncie. There's we, a few of us. A few of us that, you know, enjoy downtown Muncie and um, we were at an establishment there and we were bannering around. We have these uh, um, like brainstorming sessions and a lot of us in that group were being affected by the transition and then probably the other half, and so it might have been 50-50 mix, and the other half of that group weren't being affected by transition at all. Like, they, you know, they, their kids were already graduated or they didn't have a dog in the fight at mm-hmm, all. Mm-hmm. Um, so our thoughts were, you know, we're from the Rust Belt. You know, this is Rust Belt America. You know, it's Muncie Community Schools. You know, and I could see, I could see where the Southsiders were really upset about losing their history. What they thought their perce- their perception was that they were losing their history. Mm-hmm. Their history was just going to stop on that day that Southside closed. Yeah, true. They weren't going to make any new history. You know. Um, so I'm not like, well, then why not have the same thing happen to Central? Just go ahead and bury the Bearcat. Why why not? Is that are they because their their history is more storied than ours? You know, they have a hundred years as opposed to, you know, this thirty five or forty, fifty three years or whatever it is on this other side. Is it because of the longevity, does it make it more important? You know, I don't know. Um, so I mean let's quell that argument altogether and let's just get rid of it. And what better way than, you know, I came up with the idea, well, it was bannered back and forth, and then somebody spouted out Phoenix, and we were thinking dragons, river rats, you know, what, you know, Muncie, something that could be totally Muncie. And we thought, well, let's just go, let's just jump the shark totally and go with Phoenix because that gives them a chance. You know, Phoenix is all about rebirth. So you kill two schools, you know, then from, you know, from the ashes rose this Phoenix. You know, we had this whole thing planned out, and it sounded great to us. And we're paying her, you know, we're paying her back and forth. And it gets to the point where people thought it was true. People would send me messages. Oh, I thought it was going to be renamed. And I'm like, no, no, no. Muncie Community Schools decide they're not going to rename it. They're going to keep that storied Bearcat history and, you know, perpetuate that, you know, to infinity. Um, so, you know, because it's more important. Um, but, you know, it was a total chance. So, yeah, we had, you know, the Phoenix was the name. Um you know, I thought they should call it Muncie High School right. as opposed to Muncie Central or South. <laughs> change the name, change the logo. Um, we picked up, you know, we picked up out callers. Um, you know, we're thinking orange and purple, you know. Orange just because it's the color of the Phoenix and purple. If you, well, I, you know, just some of that or like, you know, if you if you mix the two colors together, you know what I mean? I don't know what it was, something like orange and um, Side with central, yeah, they're picking the purple. You know, yeah. Black. Orange and black. Oh, orange and black. <laughs> orange and black. Orange and black. Yeah, orange and black. And so, uh, but you know, I, I, the problem was, and you know, I can understand. I can understand them. You know, well, we have this, you know, and then that way you'd have quelled all of those folks on the south side of Muncie, saying, "Well, we lost." You'd put them all. You'd put all of Muncie in the same boat. You, you would, in effect, closed both high schools and made one new one. But, but to stop you there, because th- this idea of by... It was almost like you only angered um, Southside folks by closing Southside, and then Central was kind of status quo, just business status as quo. usual. So by also angering Central folks, it's it's a wash. It's a wash. Everyone's angry. Everyone's angry. But then you, if you look at it from a cumulative standpoint, rather than having one side of town angry... You have two sides of town angry, and that really doesn't wash. It just 
a mass is more angry. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I've had that conversation, and I thought, well, you know, am I am I just being, you know, jealous or, you know, superfluous or whatever, just to their cause? Am I not being empathetic to their, you know, their cause? What if we lot? What if we close their school? Mm-hmm. And we, you know, I've weighed those options, and I thought to myself, no, you know, I'm right. Um, for the simple fact that, yeah, sure, but then I think that you would put everybody on the same, even though you might have angered more people, they would have started on the, it all been even keel. You wouldn't have had those folks now, the folks that, you know, perception are, you know, were the redhead stepchildren of Muncie, Indiana, you know, were the not so good, never ran, you know, Muncie Southsiders. Their, you know, their perception, when they put them in the same boat with the folks on the the north side of town, then all of a sudden, you know, we uh, we have a common cause. So I thought the common cause outweighed the fact that you might, you know, tick off, you know, twice as many people. So point to rally around then. Rally. Point to rally around. Yeah, exactly. A rallying point, you know, a rallying cry. And then, you know, but, you know, like, like again, like I said, Muncie Community Schools had to sell it that they're going to make the best high school that we, you know, that is possible in East Central Indiana, and we're going to call it Muncie High School. And we're truly going to be one Muncie, as opposed to, you know, we're going to make one high school, but it's still going to be Muncie Central. So you folks, we're not really going to change anything for you. We're going to keep the status quo. We're going to add some more kids, you know, but, you know, but you're going to get the good part. You know, you're going to get our good marching band, and, you know, you'll get our good color guard, and, you know, our good drama department. You'll get, you know, our one great history teacher that's over there. And Who's he, that? my wife. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to get that on the record. <laughs> um, so, and then, you know, not only that, you'll know, you'll give him a great cheerleading coach, you know, who's also my wife. And then you'll, you'll have, you'll get all the positives, mm-hmm. you know, and the negatives will, you know, the neg, you know, every school system has a little, I mean, every, every school has a little bit of negatives, but the negatives, you know, they won't matter, but you'll get our positives. And then if you don't like the part that we deal with, you just have to deal with it. You know, we're not really going to show you any empathy. So you know, to tie all that together, are are you almost saying that by um, consolidating the name and the mascot with the consolidation of the buildings, it would have been forcing everyone to assimilate rather than just people on the south exactly. side? Exactly, exactly. Okay. It, it, it by for by for, like I I sound like one like a Borg or whatever Star Trek assimilation or whatever. You're you're going to be forced to all be one group. We. You are drafted into this. Mm-hmm. You have no choice now. Now you have to. Now you all are part of something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you might be mad. You might be miffed. But guess what? We're going to make it the best we can. This is our steps to do that. You know, you we we as a we as a as the head of the as as the you know the school board or administration. You know, we might be the perceived enemy now, but we're doing what's we're doing what's best, and this is why, or what we perceive as best, and this is why, as opposed to. Well, you know, we really don't want to do this, but, you know, maybe we have these town hall meetings and you get up and talk and tell us how much, you know, you're going to be worried about your kids being bullied or what, you know, come on. That, you know, that was, all that was was lip service and it didn't, it didn't do anything, but just, you know, cause a bigger riff. So about that bullying, the north side and the south side divisions um, have been around here in Muncie for as far back as, I mean, for as far back as... Most people can remember they've been around since the Lens came here in the 20s and studied Muncie. And at the town hall meetings, um, several people voiced their concern that there would be the bullying you just mentioned were Southsiders to come into the central building and everyone was mingling, talking, being in the same classes together. Where do you think that fear came from, that there would be bullying? Um, the, the, the fear becomes, like, as I, like I said before, Southsiders, you know, not only Southsiders, a lot of them that perceive themselves as Southsiders first, you know, as opposed to being community folks or Munsonians, um, they fear the because of the disparity. There's Southside's a weird Southside High School was a weird climate where um, you did not have a great divide. Um, among, demographically, everybody fit in the same boat. They were all poor kids. You know, if, you know, even if it was, uh, you know, you understood that, yeah, you're, you know, you're, 
you know, your friend might, might not be able to go out and eat, you know, or go on, you know, spring break. You know, you understood that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that was accepted. Um, so I think that a lot of those people thought, you know, the people that perceived that, you know, bullying was going to happen to their children or to the kids in general was the fact that they thought that those kids, just because, you know, economically, they, did, they couldn't. But, you know, truth be told that the demographics aren't all that different, whereas that, you know, whereas at Central, you might have the ones you might, you know, on the, on the you know, your upper end might be totally, you know, astronomical compared to, you know, whatever. But demographically, they're not really different. So they, they fit in, you know, it's, you're still looking at it, you know, the percentages aren't, you know, you're still looking at 70 some odd, 5% kids on a free reduced lunch in Muncie Community Schools. Those kids are still the same kids, yeah, yeah. you know, and folks were afraid that they weren't because they perceived themselves as being less than because they're Southsiders. They thought they wouldn't fit in. So they thought, in turn, my kids, you know, it's, it's different. You know, it's not like it was, you know, we're all in the same boat. You know, it's not, they couldn't, they couldn't wrap their head around the fact that that kid, if that kid, you know, grew up in, you know, is from Shed Town, or if that kid, you know, grew up by the mall, there's no difference. That same, that kid, you know, that kid fits into that same, you know, that same mold. There's, there's, but they couldn't, they couldn't see that because to them, you know, as, you know, generations ago, that might have been, you know, a, quite a bit different. They thought that, you know, my kid's going to look down upon because he's the, he's from the poor side of town. When really and truly, we're all from the poor side of town. All of Muncie's the poor side of town. So since you've been going political and full. Political and philosophical on me at uh-huh. a couple of different points here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out on you here. S- see if this sticks. So, if like you were saying, high school and the public school system in general is supposed to be almost like a, a testing room for kids as they grow older to prepare them for the real world, the public sphere, public space. Wouldn't there be a certain value in in that diversity? Well, one of would bringing think. Every, of bringing everyone oh, yeah. to Central rather than you're saying, you know, it was so similar at Southside. Would you say? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, well, you that? know, yeah. And I, I have, and I, I'm a big believer in diversified education where you, I mean, just, you know, where you have people of different, you know, different backgrounds in one building learning. I, that it is a true, that is a true measure of the community you live in. Um, I'm a, I'm a big believer and I think, you know, but I'm a, I'm a big believer in public education. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just that my wife, you know, is a public school teacher. It's, you know, I think that, I think there are great things and I don't think there's enough emphasis put on that. <clears throat> you know, how great public schools can be and how they, what they should be. Um, but I think, yeah, um, yeah, I, I like I said, I wasn't ever opposed. I, you know, I, in my in my heart of hearts, in my in my mind of minds, I knew that there would be one high school. If not this year, five years down, you know, there there would have to be. But it, we couldn't sustain it mm-hmm. unless something major happened. Like you know, we all of a sudden have an influx. You know, we get an oil boom here in Muncie. You know, or something where we get you know, you know, so many more people and to you know be able to uh, sustain two high schools. But you know, it's it's not going to happen. So, yeah, yeah, I can, I, I do see the benefit of one high school, but I, was, I just wish that it was Muncie High School as opposed to Muncie Central. Okay. What role do you think a high school plays in a community's identity? Everything. Um, well, it, now, let me see. Let's speak that back. Now, it's a little different in metropolitan areas where you have schools that are separated by more of a neighborhood feeling Mm -hmm. where, um, you know, a a mid-sized city, the size of Muncie, I believe it's, it's everything because it could be, um, it can be what, it could be a common goal that the whole community has. Um, be it, you know, from rooting on the summer band, you know, marching band to, you know, you know, going to a play to, you know, rooting on, you know, the girls' softball team, boys' basketball team, anything like that where someone can get behind as a community, you can get behind and support them 
and common ground, then he's got to do nothing but bring folks together. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, it's that banner, it's that rallying cry where, you know, that if somebody could just get up and say, you know, yeah, let's follow these guys, they're doing great. You know, you have some, you can go to the grocery store and you always have something to talk about to that person at that grocery store if they pay any attention to what's around them. Yeah. You know, not, you know, not everybody does, but if I'm saying if they do, then yeah, you know, you can say, you know, you can talk about, you know, local schools. Anyway. What, what will the effects of consolidation be? And I mean, you've talked about this already, but, you know, feel free to um, go on with it. But what do you think that, what effects are we seeing already? All right. Like I said, the, 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 the biggest thing is, um, the well, I think the biggest, like I said, and uh, I'll go back to this. Is that the biggest negative thing is the impact that it had on the kids that were going to graduate from Southside this year that lost that opportunity, even though they can get, you know, they can carry a Southside diploma or wear Southside cap and gown. For them to lose their senior year at something that they were looking forward to since they were wee little um, and then the lack of empathy for those kids that's the that's the biggest part of it uh, the the and I you know and you know our daughter with my wife with my wife being a, a school teacher um, and the cheerleading the prior cheerleading coach at South and now the cheerleading coach at Central um, our daughter's hand was forced she had to be positive you know she couldn't be negative you know her dad's all about you know her dad's you know screaming about consolidation you know he's her, her dad is out blaming people for you know putting these people in office to cause tax caps to make we have to have that you know what i mean you know my mom's my mom's over there trying to recruit girls you know to cheer for from the other schools so um i really um that's the only that's the biggest negative thing the most the, the is the fact that my daughter did not get to experience what she had looked forward to her whole life mm-hmm. and um she won't admit it, you know, she wouldn't, but I mean, for me, I think that that will be a chip that she carries for her whole life, no matter what. There's no way you can hide that. It's something, you know, oh yeah, my senior year of high school, they closed my school, you know, or all that. Well, you've said it a couple of times that you don't think that um, the higher ups were as empathetic as they could have been. Oh no, not at all. What could they have done to be more empathetic? Well, not only that, community members from the north side of town had no empathy Okay. Um, to the fact because they're at the status quo. So they you know they're not changing. They don't need to show empathy because they're at the status quo. Whereas we move in as Southsiders, you know, and we're trying to look, you know, we have these expectations of how great this is all supposed to be when you know we might have had things over there that were a little bit better. Mm-hmm. You know, but we're coming over here and now and this thing's all be going to be great, you know. We're all rallying behind this, you know, we swallowed our pride, you know. We're not you know, we'll wear purple and white, you know, we burnt, you know, we got rid of all, you know, took all our red t-shirts to Goodwill. Um, but, you know, the lack of empathy that those folks showed, that those folks show towards, now, it's not on all levels, but you still, you'll, you still see it. You still see the disdain, the snootiness, um, you know, and I was on, you know, several committees and people, you know, you know, prior to consolidation and people, you know, oh yeah, well, they're still taken aback. Oh yeah, this kid's from you know this guy's from South Muncie. Yeah, you know I never thought it, but you know that's you know they could have you know understand you know instead of trying to make it I, yeah I, I really don't know how they could have been more empathetic. They could probably put their ear listen to the kids a little more, even though you know. But when you try to do that, all you're all you're doing is. Uh, I think the empathy needed to happen after the school started and people realized that, yeah, you know, I, I realize that stuff is, you know, stuff is uh, not the way it was. And, you, you know, I think the problem was they couldn't, the folks on the north side couldn't realize that maybe some stuff was really, truly better on the south side of town. Maybe the south side of town had a few things right. Um, but, you know, we'll keep with the status quo. We don't want to, you know, we don't need to disturb anything. So that their, their empathy lays in the fact that they could not be disturbed in the status quo. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. You know I'm, what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm going to suffer. I want you to suffer, but I don't want to take any of the suffering on myself. Yeah. 
Suffering might be a strong word, but... Do you think that the big economic changes that Muncie has experienced over the last 10, 20, 30, 40 decades made consolidation necessary? Yeah, definitely. De- I mean, it's, it's a given. It's, it's, it's Rust Belt America. It's happened all over the place. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, another fault of, uh, it's another fault of government, state government. Um, you know, m- public schools aren't, you know, high on their priority list. You know, so if, if public schools aren't high on their priority list, how do you expect, you know, it to be on anybody else's? Um, you know, we have a lovely state where we have, you know, we we have folks that we, you know, we try to put, you know, you you cannot, it's, it's, it's amazing to me that folks don't realize that. I don't know if, uh, the, you know, I guess they don't see that by the folks that they put in the state house, um, in turn affect their daily. They don't perceive it as affecting their daily lives. You know, it's not me. I, I vote for this guy because he uh, or this gal because you know that's that's what I, who I've always voted. You know, I've always voted that way. But they don't realize that in turn. Yeah, you might do that, but you might want to hear what they have to say about you know education. May you know how they're going to fund education. You know, where they're going to get that money from, you know. Oh, yeah, well, you better not tax me anymore on my property taxes. You know, even if, it, you know, it might be that one, you know, that one, that 0.5%, you know, but I'm going to, I'm going to sure get up and complain about the fact that, you know, my, you know, my schools can't afford paper, you know, in the long run, you know, that's the way it is. I'm going to, I'm going to get up and complain, but yet I don't want to be a part of the solution. I just want to complain about the fact that there's no solution. Does that make any sense? I don't. I don't know. No. You know what I mean. I want. I want to complain about the fact that you know this is happening, but in turn, I don't want to be part of it, or you know, I don't want to accept any responsibility. I just want to yell. Okay. What advice would you give to children growing up in Muncie today, who are living in the city as it is now and going through the school system? Um, get out and do anything you can. Um, join clubs. Uh, get out and join. And, don't be afraid to try anything. Um, you know, if uh, you want to try out for a sports team and you think that you might be able to make it, then try it. If you think that um, there are plenty, or if you want to be in something or be part of, be part of something, be part of the bigger. Um, don't, don't just, um, don't just. Don't be insular. You know, I complained about all these insular folks and how, how don't be insular and then let yourself, you know, get out and meet people, you know, do things, um, experience it. Um, yeah, and, you know, this is never be embarrassed of where you're from, ever. There is no reason, you don't have a choice in the matter. You know, you're not like you're the one. You didn't pick your mom and dad. Never be embarrassed of where you're from. Um, but do your best to make where you're from the best place that it can be. I almost don't want to ask you this last question because that's such a good note. To <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to add? That's my last question. Um, no, you know, and it's it's weird. I'm, you know, it's I'm, I might be a little different bird. I mean, I'm very, very... You know, and I had to bite my tongue for a long time uh, about consolidation. It's because, you know, and this is probably one of the first places I've ever really, besides my friends, that I speak openly about it. Mm-hmm. Um, or spoke openly about it, I should say. And, um, I, I mean, I was so excited to be, you know, even be thought of, you know, when Mel, you know, when my wife told me about this. But um, the biggest thing is I wish schools would look to communities where the things that were school schools would look to other communities not just neighboring communities but schools would look at other communities where consolidations and things because things just don't happen in one place things are the same all over now we might be middletown america and we might be that little that little grasp of what you know that little you know that little thing that you know that makes us that but you know truthfully you can find middletown america you know out west, east, north, and south. So I think that if people would look 
you know, outwards instead of, you know, looking inside. And I think that we'd have been a little bit better off. That's a wrap, Mark. Yeah. Thank, thank That's you. a wrap. Thank That's you. a wrap. <laughs>